You're listening to the Inquisitive Rent Podcast, the show that brings you philosophical ponderings of your life from a bird's eye view. Now, here's your host, Shah. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Inquisitive Rent Podcast. I'm Shah, your host. Thank you so much for joining me today. And this is another segment in the the Spirit in Spirituality a segment of the podcast. So today I'm going to be exploring a very interesting topic, and it is all about the clairs. We, we affectionately call the clairs, all the clairs, clairvoyance, clairaudience. I'll go through each one and we'll talk about them because I'm very aware that some of you will be embarking upon your journey as a psychic or medium. You'll be delving into this element of spirituality at some point and some of you may have questions about your own abilities to, to find out if you're clairvoyant, uh, if you are medium. So I thought I might talk a bit about the clairs because they can often help us to learn a bit more about where you're starting out. The existence of the paranormal is not really accepted in the scientific uh, world or community, as we know. And so parapsychology, which is the study of the paranormal, uh, can be pretty much seen as a pseudoscience. And so there's a lot of work to be done still in psychology and science about the research. Now, I don't know why there's not more research being done. I suspect it's uh, costs, you know, research is very expensive, can be, uh, but there still needs to be a lot of work done on this topic. And I don't believe that there's enough information out there about it. I do talk about this on the podcast. Uh, I've got um, a segment about the threads that connect us all. I also have mentioned this when interviewing other mediums and psychics. I thought it would be helpful to talk a bit more about the actual spiritual gifts or abilities that we have as mediums and psychics. Because some of you will be embarking upon this journey for the very first time. Some of you will be exploring what you may have as a natural ability or something that you may want to train with or train on and learn and expand a bit more. And some of you just may be curious. Some of you may be very skeptical, like myself. I remain a skeptic about all things. I feel as though I'm a natural born skeptic. I'm always asking why, always asking the questions, critical thinking. I think that's very important. Uh, As a medium, I trust the information that I'm given. As a medium and psychic, I trust the information. And a lot of this is about belief systems as well. I often talk about that, uh, what we believe. Uh, not interpret or anything like that, but what the evidence shows. So for myself, I'm what you might may call an evidential medium. So my role, my job as a medium is to give you evidence of life and survival after death, after a spirit has passed on. That's my role. And so that evidence may include many things, names, dates, things that you cannot research or look up uh, instances, you know, memories that nobody else would know about. And some of this will involve the clairs, you know, I may sense, so clairsentience, uh, something, I may feel something, clairsentience, I may see an address on, uh, you know, clairvoyantly, that's clairvoyance. And so it's all about clear, being clear with the evidence. So the word clair means clear in French. And we'll talk about each one so that we can see uh, one word is Latin, but we'll come to that. But we'll talk about each one so that you and I'll give examples and you can see and compare and see if perhaps you have a clair or you're learning about a clair or you have a natural ability. Now, I'll preface this by saying, I have no idea why some psychics and mediums have some clairs and some have others. Some have them all. 
I believe I was born with all of them. So when I started knowing and learning that I was psychic and that I could actually hear the dead, it all came about. So there was the clairaudience. So I was actually hearing spirits. I was hearing singing. I was hearing lots of stuff. Um, but I was also smelling and tasting things that weren't literally in front of me, things I would have no idea about. I'll give you those examples later. Um, <laughs> really interesting things. Uh, but I was also able to see, to locate objects. And I know, I know how that sounds, but how would I know where that was? I, I don't know you. I don't know where you live. I don't know any of that. So how can I do that? So that's clairvoyant. So I'm remote viewing. So I'm seeing things. So you may be thinking, oh, lucky you. You've got them all. Well, um, yes, at this stage in my journey of helping people through mediumship, yes, I'm very grateful for all the clairs. However, some of them are more so than others. And we'll come to that. And also when you're very, very young, uh, some of it's overwhelming. To, uh, some of it's happening all at once and it can be overwhelming. So let's start with the fact that usually we tend to lump all the clairs together. Um, but I believe each deserves its own just due. And that's why we're here today. So let's talk about one of the most popular terms used, which is clairvoyance, clear seeing. So clair is clear in French and voyance means vision in French. So this is the ability to see things very clearly, things that are not in normal vision range. For instance, to see an individual that is not physically in front of you. So an example of that would be if you're giving someone a reading and you can see uh, their relative, their dead relative, or let's say someone's still alive and they're talking about their partner and they want some information, they want to know how to move forward, um, I will be able to see the partner. So uh, a recent thing that happened was I kept pointed to my left cheek I kept going what's what's here on him what's here on and she said he's got a birthmark he's got a birthmark on his cheek now how would I know that I was able to see it I've met I I am I do not know this person so I uh, so that's an example I I have to I'm gonna have to temper myself because I'm always like shocked as well after all these years, I'm like, oh, my goodness, really? So, yes, it's, it's incredible. I, every day I am grateful for, for the abilities, and I remain stunned and astonished. And I think that keeps the spirit alive in me to be able to do it all as such, you know, as such, not literally a spirit alive in me. I mean, because, you know, people take this out of context. So I may be able to see, or you may be able to see objects. So let's say you're giving a reading to someone and you may be able to say, oh, you know, that plant is, um, you know, one of your plants is that it's the one near the, the door or something like that. Uh, and you're able to see it. Now, it's very, it will be very important to distinguish, and this is why we're going to talk about all the clairs, between literally clairvoyantly seeing the plant or getting a sense, clairsentience, a knowing, claircognizance of the plant. And we'll come to all of those. But it will be very important to distinguish between all of them. They are all to do with the senses, all of them. And so in order to know what you're capable of having, doing, seeing, being, offering to people, you have to work with it to find out. So that example about the plant, as a clairvoyant, I would quite likely see the plant. But sometimes spirit may just give me a sense that the plant is dying and it's by the door. And this is what you need to do. This is where you need to move it to. You're overwatering it. You're doing this. 
So it may not be that they show it to me. It just depends. And so for you out there who are developing spiritually, developing your mediumistic skills, your psychic skills, work on distinguishing what you're able to do, what you're getting. Are you literally seeing it? Can you describe it? Or are you feeling it? And can you still describe it while sensing it and feeling it? You will be able to do both, some of you, but know the difference. Know the difference so that when you're telling someone, you can say, I am seen. And if you're sensing it, you can say, I am sensing. It's very important to be clear with the person you're reading for as well. By all means, be very clear about your gifts, what you can do, because they're all spectacular, wondrous gifts. And it's okay if you're sensing it. You don't have to see it. You're still You're still clairsentient. So it doesn't matter. One's not better than the other. And that is the ego that people will, will sometimes have, that they want to see it all, feel it all. Well, again, that comes with its own <laughs> uh, challenges. Another example of clair a clairvoyance would be seeing a situation play out and you weren't there. You don't even know the people. You have no clue. You, you don't know anything about this, but you could tell them, look, the dark haired lady said this and the other guy said that. And, you know, they were all standing around a desk and the desk is on the second floor and it's an office they normally don't use, but they all tend to go in there and chat and gossip. You know, you could you, you, you're seeing it. You're literally seeing them go up and walk up the stairs. You're seeing you're seeing it all. And you have no clue. You don't know. But so the question I always get when I'm training people is people say, but how do I know that this is happening? Well, the answer is clear. You need to trust your clairvoyance. If you're seeing it, that's how you know. That's how you know, because you're literally seeing it. So the thing is not to question what you're seeing. Give what you're getting. My favorite saying is, I give what I get. I give what I get. So give what you get. Don't question it. Don't pick it apart. That's not for you to do. As the medium, you are meant to give the information over and let them deal with it. Let them handle it. Uh, because they know more than you. Obviously, you don't know anything. You don't know these people. So some of my favorite readings to do is about work. I love the dynamics of power play and work. And so I get a lot of people asking about work situations. So the example I gave is a typical one. If somebody thinks that they're being gossiped about or that they may uh, be a target or something, so they may ask me to look into it for them. And I can see all the players in it. Why? Why do you get all that? It's because that's what they've asked for. And that information will help to inform the person's decisions. And that's a spiritual journey that they're on. It's okay to tap into spirituality to help you along your way. And so when people say, oh, you're talking to evil spirits or the devil and all that. Okay, so my question, I rarely answer a question with questions, but I would say to you, so I will say to you, look, if that were the case, which it isn't, uh, why would the devil want to help someone to move forward in their lives? I thought that evil likes to destroy. This information has helped people. Uh, the amount of emails and feedback that I get about, oh, my God, thank you so much. Because that came through, I looked into it and you were right. That's exactly what they're doing. I've applied for another job and I got it. And now I'm so much happier. I'm out of that negativity. So how is that? You know, the person I, I actually even had one where the person's health improved because they actually left a very. uh very, very bad situation around their work. And they just couldn't get their head around it. They weren't able to see what was really going on. So 
asking a medium or psychic for help with that is helpful because they are able to see if they're clairvoyant exactly what's going on. Even if they have clairsentience, they can sense what's going on. But you can also, you can query the psychic. You can say, well, are you seeing it or are you feeling it? A lot of you guys don't want to query because you think the psychic is not going to want to help you. Well, if they're that type of personality, then they shouldn't be doing the work uh, because that's, that's not helpful. They should be proud, very proud to say, I'm, I'm clairvoyant. I'm seeing it or I'm clairsentient. I sense it. I feel it. I'm not seeing anything, but I'm sensing it. I'm feeling it very strongly. It's okay. So please take the ego out of all the clairs. We've got to remove the ego from the clairs. So the other element involved in clairvoyance is retrocognition, which is viewing events from the past, really looking into the past. So you, you may, as a psychic, as a medium, you may say, you know, the last two jobs you had, this happened, that happened. So how do you know that? If you're clairvoyant, you're seeing it. They're showing you. They're showing you how you looked. I remember doing a reading once and I could literally see how much the lady's hair had changed from the second job. to the third. And I said, oh, you know, you used to have this kind of hair. She went, oh, my God. You know, so you when you're clairvoyant, just say it. If you're clairsentient, just say, you know, I feel when you were that and that, that happened. You're being, it's being impressed upon you. And depending on your psychic gifts, you will receive the impressions differently. Again, so for some of you, the clairvoyance, you may be, you may have all the clairs, but perhaps the clairvoyance is your strongest, or perhaps the clairaudience is your strongest. We'll come to that. I'm trying not to jump ahead, but the clairs, you can't mention one without the other. They're a fiddly bunch. <laughs> and of course, the, uh, the not opposite, but the other string to that is precognition, which just simply means you're able to talk about events that are about to happen, that are about to happen. So uh, I have given this example before. I, you know, I'm rolling, I, my eyes went up because I thought, should I give, I've already given this example. Should I find a new, but I'm going to give it. I'm going to, because it's a really good example. It's if you watch my video about the thread that connects us all, I gave the example of the tray where I was out with some people and I just got this feeling. It's all clear sentience. I got this strong feeling that a tray with a bunch of glasses and drinks was, was going to drop. Then I heard the tray dropping without it physically dropping. So clear audience I heard the tray dropping and I then I could see a tray just falling to the floor so Claire voyance so all the three Claire's kicked in then and I did mention it to people and they were like oh and then a few minutes later of course the tray dropped glasses everything went all over the place uh, so it's pre now that's a simple one that didn't hurt anybody you know I mean that was just simple um, but some people are really able to predict uh, real, you know, future events, huge things. I mean, our biggest, one of our biggest examples is Nostradamus uh, predicting wars and all sorts of things. So some people really do have that gift of precognition. So one of my very favorite aspects of clairvoyance is remote viewing, very close to my heart. Uh, and this is when you're able to, again, see objects that aren't in your vision, that aren't physically in front of you. And you're able to locate objects, uh, to place them in time and space. And an example of this, I've given this example before, is, my, you know, my favorite one, train ticket lady, who it was a, a client who wanted who had misplaced a train ticket to see her son and rang up to speak and to have a reading. And I was able to view and find the train ticket for her. I love, I love it. Um, and the only way I would have known it was correct was she actually phoned back. She took the time to let me know that it was, it was exactly where I had seen it. So clairvoyance, 
I, and also I have to say there was clear sentience there because I sensed that it hadn't been lost or I sensed it was in the home. That was my biggest impression that I sensed it was still in the home. And, and then I had, then clairvoyance kicked in and I could see where it was. So remote viewing. Now, I, I don't believe I, you don't have to have all of these, you know, a bit, you know, for instance, just the clairsentience probably would have gotten there. So my sense it's in, I sense it's there, I sense it's there. Uh, but for me, I'm, I find clairvoyance uh, and clairaudience very strong for, for myself. All of them are, but especially that probably my first few that I get. Uh, but it just depends. It depends on the day. It depends on the person. It depends on me, probably. It depends on spirit. It depends on everything. So I'm, I'm just grateful for, for anything that I can see to help someone, to help them. That's the whole idea of it, to help. So simply put, to say that you're clairvoyant means that you can see into the past, future, the present, you can see people around that aren't in your peripheral vision or anywhere near you or anything you've never met. You can see people who've passed on. You can see things that nobody else can. And, you know, just like some animals can hear sounds that we can't hear, that's what clairvoyance is. It's something that's not apparent that you're able to tap into, but not just now in the present, but also in the past and also in the future. And whilst clairvoyance is probably one of the most talked about clairs, it's probably, uh, it's not the most common, but it's one of the most acknowledged clair. You know, for instance, a lot of people call themselves clairvoyant mediums. I recently interviewed Ruth Phillips, who is a clairvoyant medium. She, her primary skill is clairvoyance, which is brilliant. Uh, and so it just depends. And uh, but clairvoyance, a lot of people talk about clairvoyance, uh, but it's not the most common. So which one is? Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now back to the show. Let's talk about Claire audience. So again, Claire clear and then audient is latin it just means hearing to be clear audient means that you can hear sounds voices outside of a normal range that people wouldn't be able to normally hear now i will talk a little bit about one of my gripes about clear audience but the gift itself is amazing so if you're clairaudient, it means that if you're a medium, you'll be able to hear the spirit talking to you. Uh, if you're psychic, well, both, you know, if you need to hear something that somebody's talking about, you'll be able to hear the conversation. You'll be able to hear the sounds, all of it. And also, I believe you're able to hear the silence and Again, as I talked about with clairvoyance, you need to work on, if you're developing, if you're doing psychic development, it's imperative that you work on which is which. So if you are clairaudient, if you're hearing something, make sure you're hearing it and not sensing it. There's a difference. A lot of people who are developing clairaudiently because sometimes it's a development, you may be very aware that you've got one clair, and then all of a sudden you're starting to hear things. Where did that come from? So I hear that a lot from people. So everybody doesn't get them all at once. Sometimes people get them as they go. And if you're developing spiritually, psychically, clair audience may just pop in at, at any time. And you may find that you're hearing through one ear so it's odd. You may think that, oh, hearing, isn't that a sense? No, it's literal hearing. And just like auditory hearing, just like your human ear, you may be able to hear better in one ear or better than the other, or 
only hear in one ear. So a lot of people will say to me during de during development, oh, it's coming through my left ear or my right ear. And that's fine. It doesn't matter. Whilst you're giving the information or receiving it, it won't make a difference anyway. Whilst you're receiving, giving the information, it really won't matter. It won't make a difference. You just give what you get. Whatever you hear, give. Again, distinguish, are you hearing it or are you feeling it, sensing it, clairsentience? Or are you just knowing it, claircognizance? We'll come to all of that. Clairaudience is a brilliant gift because not only can you hear spirit or uh, unauditory sounds, you're also able to hear beautiful sounds like singing or birds chirping that aren't literally chirping. You can, I, I do remember hearing frogs and lots of different beautiful sounds. You're also able to hear voices of people who've passed on. So if you're a medium and you're giving that information to someone, you're able to say, he had a very rough voice or she had a beautiful soft voice because you're hearing it. Again, distinguish, you're sensing it. Are you being told this by the spirit? Uh, be sure to use what you get. Say that's what you're getting. You're hearing it or you're sensing it or feeling it. Because sometimes if you're not clairaudient, then you'll, you, maybe the spirit is telling you, oh, you know, I had a very booming voice or I had a very soft voice. Well, just say, you know, he's telling me he had a very soft voice. So again, he's telling me how are you hearing him say it? Is he writing it down? Are you clairvoyant or are you just sensing it? Is that how he's telling you? So people who are receiving readings, the audience won't know. They'll just hear, oh, it's coming from him. As a medium, if I'm listening to a psychic give that information or a medium give that information, I want to know, are you hearing? How do you know? He's telling you how. Are you, are you clairaudient, clairvoyant? And, for, for, and that's because I teach. So I want to ensure that people know what they're getting. To be clairaudient just means that you can hear sounds that nobody else can. And not everyone has clairaudience, and that's absolutely fine. Again, no competition, no ego in the clairs. They all have their own power. If you've listened to any of my videos, I have talked about uh, the fact that I am a skeptic of a lot of things. I'm naturally born to question things and to look into things, to research. And despite, you know, my scientific training as uh, in psychology, I disagree strongly with the idea that if you're clairaudient, it means you have schizophrenia. I have seen a psychologist on YouTube on other, in other spaces literally say that if a psychic, if somebody is saying they can hear things or hear spirits or hear voices, it means they've got schizophrenia. It's such a damaging thing to say, but also it's inaccurate. And it also, I was talking about this, but whilst interviewing another medium, I find it says more about the person because, you know, then, uh, you know, para the paranormal, because that's such a tiny view of the world. We don't know everything. And that does imply that we're all in this box and everybody has to tick a box from the DSM or everybody. If you hear voices, you're, you, you know, you've got a mental health issue. That is damaging. It's dangerous and it's very unhelpful. So I would encourage the psychologist and everybody else out there who thinks this to do some research. Now, again, there needs to be more research. I think it's funding. I've looked into this and it is a lot of it is funding, at least in the UK. It is. I don't know what it's like the rest of the world. Uh, there has to be there is a spiritist union here, you know, lots of spiritist stuff going on. But again, no real research into it, no scientific research. So there's a lot of people talking about this, including myself. And, you know, without doing the, the actual funding, the research. What I have done is kept case studies. 
uh, obviously without names and things, but that, and that's what case studies are. But you you need to collect the information uh, and do something with it. But we do need a lot more. And so I would say to you, if you're developing psychically, spiritually, to please put aside any judgment from other people, especially those who call themselves professionals, who are labeling the, the community, the spiritual community as narcissists or who have uh, mental health problems or who have schizophrenia because they hear voices. Now, as a practitioner, I have worked with people who do have schizophrenia and hearing those voices is very different from hearing psychic voices, from hearing spiritual voices, from being clairaudient. Very, very different thing, extremely different. And there are some very stark differences, which I don't believe this is the space to go into. You can look some information up if you want to, but I want to keep it to this topic, to the Claire's, but there is a stark difference. So, um, and to hone that in, for instance, as a medium, as a psychic, if I'm working with someone, giving a reading, the voices that I'm hearing are telling me to tell the person, this happened, that happened, uh, this is where you used to live, you know, this is the love we have, that we're remembering the childhood, remembering the bike they bought them, remembering the, the birth of their child. It's many beautiful, lovely memories. And even if it is difficult, like, oh, maybe they left someone or they abandoned them, you know, abandonment comes up in readings too. Even if it's that, never has a spirit said, go and do something harmful to yourself or to somebody else. Never. So there is a stark difference. And there's a healing energy that comes with the energy that flows through me as the medium to the person and through the, through the spirit, because that's the intention. It's the only reason why I step into the space and allow that energy to uh, permeate mine because I am in the space of healing. So, so much research has to be done. However, even without the research, even just as a human being who's taken an oath, a scientific oath to help people, saying that people who you've never met, who may have a paranormal, paranormal psychic ability is schizophrenic, is shaming on mental health. So it's downing mental health. Uh, it's stigmatizing mental health, but it's also stigmatizing those who have these gifts, uh, who, you know, the gifts that aren't known as such. I mean, even Einstein spoke about energy and vibration. So you call yourself a scientist, but you need, you need to do more and you need to do better. <laughs> That's my rant about that, because I believe it's very damaging and dangerous to do so. Um, so that's the problem I have with those findings. The other thing is, it's easy to blame a phenomenon like a psychic gift on a diagnosis with a, in a little tiny box, just because you can't understand it, you refuse to accept it because of perhaps an ego thing, because you don't have the gift, and therefore nobody else can have it because you don't have it, uh, which is ego. Uh, it's easy to box that person into a tiny little box, tiny space. I would say as well, something like spirituality uh, and the clairs especially can be tricky only because you're trying to, if you're developing spiritually, psychically, you're trying to understand the information you're getting. You're trying to distinguish it and understand it. And this is why spiritual development is real. It's a must because you do need to know what you're doing. You need to know what you're sensing, what you're feeling. It helps to strengthen your gifts when you do. It's like every other gift. You know, if you've got the ability to run marathons, the more you practice, the better you are at it. The, if you've got the ability for music, the more you practice, you know, how many hours 
did someone like Prince, who was naturally gifted, spend practicing hours upon hours upon hours? And that wasn't because he wasn't any good. We know he was brilliant. I believe a genius, but brilliant. But it was because they just got better and better and better at it, regardless of how you viewed his music. Anyway, um, this isn't a podcast about Prince. Um, I did channel Prince. I did channel Prince. I, I have been in two minds about putting up that video uh, and I just, I just don't feel I should. That's where I, but I did get some interesting information. I channeled him twice and I, I, a part of me really wants to say what I got, but I know it's not right. It may be one day because I did tape it. So maybe one day, but not now. I want to get back on track. The Claire's. But you know, I believe it's all, I'm saying it all for a reason. Oh, yes, that's it. I wanted to talk about uh, a research uh, paper that I found. So this was a research on religious and spiritual experiences. So, you know, RSEs, uh, and, and they can be useful in comparing the auditory. Uh, well, a psychologist may call it a hallucination. Uh, that's what they lump it into. It's a hallucination. Uh, when you say you see spirit or you hear spirit. Um, and, and this article talked about that as opposed to mental health, having a mental health problem. So this is a new study in the journal, Mental Health, Religion and Culture. And I'll put the link in the show notes so you can go and read it yourself. It examined the links between auditory spiritual communications experienced by mediums, beliefs, and personality, because of course, personality always comes into it. And that's why I also believe that some people may have spiritual gifts, but because of their personality, they can't use them. And that's for many reasons. I've talked about some of this before. Anyway, the study was a part of the Hearing the Voice Project by Dr. Adam J. Powell of the Department of Theology and Religion at the University of Durham here in the UK. And Dr. Peter Mosley of the Department of Psychology at Northumbria University, uh, and they both carried out this study. So the research suggests that an association within the general population group between spiritual beliefs and absorption, so how we absorb, how we take things in, and in the group, the association between spiritual beliefs and hallucination proneness, so being prone to hallucinatory, auditory, thoughts, things, seeing things, uh, was not significant. So with psychology research, we look at significance. And so that was found not to be significant. Overall, there has to be more research done. We know that. So these are my thoughts. It was some of the findings were not applicable to myself or those people that I know who are mediums or psychics, uh, just not applicable at all. Uh, for instance, uh, personality type. Um, oh, yes, that's it. They consider education. I had to look at my notes. about. They consider education and found that most spiritual people had no formal education. Well, every psychic and medium I know has been to uni. You know, they've got masters and all sorts. Um, not everyone, but a lot of them. I said all psychics. No, not all. But a lot of them that I know do have uh, you know, degrees. So that's gone out the window. Uh, I found the opposite. Um, but they had a control group, which means that there was a small number, there was a small number of people, you know, a control group. And so they only did the research, of course, on a particular number of people. So again, this is, you know, showing that more research needs to be done. So using myself as an example, as a medium, the voices I hear are only when I'm doing mediumship. Now, I say that, but sometimes randomly I may hear a voice of a relative who's passed on. I have to tell you, it's very rare, only because I do a lot of, uh, how do I say, preparation or protection. I put up a lot of boundaries around myself. And so things can't just get in. And so sometimes I will hear something just out of the balloon. Now, am I hearing it? Yes, I'm auditorily hearing it. 
uh, or I may get a sense, or I may have cog, you know, cog, cog. I may have clairsentience. I may just sense that a, a relative is near. I've never had a voice, though, say something bad about me or, or to do anything or to, or to tell somebody else to do anything. It's never been negative. Now, <laughs> I have to say, I have had uh, spirits tell me information about people that helps me so they may say you know that person don't bother don't bother with them you know they're not uh don't just don't give your energy to that or you know a friendship or you know in the past relationships things like that the spirit will say look <laughs> that that issue forget it so i have heard those voices but again it was to help me and some of those instances really helped. So I've never had, now that could just be me. I don't know if, I don't believe, I mean, I, again, I do know psychics and mediums. I've never had anybody say that they've had a bad experience. And I am asking whilst interviewing during this segment of the podcast uh, about spirituality, I am asking them about things like this. So never had any of that. Now, um, I know that sometimes psychics have had spirits come through randomly to them, and we've all had that, I believe. But, you know, you learn to put up boundaries and you learn to uh, protect your space. One of the notes that I wrote down for myself was that science has no answer for that. <laughs> and science doesn't know everything. And that's the thing. And scientists believe that they know everything. They don't. You don't in no way, shape or form, do you? None of us do. So I believe that this is because this is why we, 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 we just haven't advanced. We need more. You have to, just like honing your instrument, you have to hone science. So the, the only way we prove science is proof. We have to keep doing it, keep researching, keep getting, you know, try, keep doing trials, keep doing it all. And I don't believe that people, people see the paranormal as so fluffy and out there in crystals and light and love or love and light that they can't be bothered. You know, they see a tarot card and they think, oh, who can, you can't be dealing with that. So that's why I think there's just too much stigma attached to it. So you see what I did there. I was complaining about the stigma of the psychologist. Um, and that's exactly what happens. It's the art that, it's a stigma around it. However, I have to say, not everyone. I mean, I have had clients who are psychiatrists. So I, I've got, client, you know, very scientific, but they do have readings. They do have psychic mediumship readings. So not everyone is that close minded. Let's move on to Claire's sentience. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, email us at inquire at the inquisitive that's E-N-Q-U-I-R-E at theinquisitiveren.com. Be sure to check all social media, especially the Facebook page, for new topics being discussed. And if you can contribute, please let us know so you can be a guest on the show. Now, back to the show. So again, clear, clear, and then sentience is a sense or awareness of something. Or, or, you know, sentience, it's French for awareness, sensation. Clairsentience is probably, I believe, the most common clair. Most people get a sense or feel of something. We've even incorporated it in our everyday language. I feel as though I sense that. We say it all the time. I feel, I know that. You know, some people go as far as to say, I know this for certain. Also, people say, you know, I had a feeling you'd say that, or I knew she would do that. I just knew it. And that is a sense of feel. You knew it. You did. Now, this is stepping on claircognizance because that's a knowing, but we will come to that. But it's similar. Most psychics uh, have very high clairsentience. That's pretty much what they start with. They're usually clairsentient, so they'll feel, they'll sense. You'll hear it in their speech. I feel that you're going to do this. I feel that she's done this. I feel I, I sense a change here. Or you'll hear it in their language. And I love that because they're being 
upfront and honest about their gift, their feeling and sensing things. And that is clairsentience. A lot of people ask as well, when you're spiritually developing, psychically developing, developing, uh, well, you know, somebody said recently, well, you know, they had a psychic reading and the psychic kept saying, well, I just feel that you're going to do that. And I said, but that's clairsentience. That's what they're feeling. And, and the person said, yeah, but they didn't hit the mark. And that is an issue with clairsentience. You're only sensing it. Now, what I always suggest to people is, again, hone your gifts, your skills. If you've got clairsentience and a very strong clairsentience, brilliant. Let's take it to the next level. Let's get some more evidence of that. So you may want to work on your clairvoyance. You may become open to hearing things. You may want to work on the other clairs to see if you can add to that. It's just like what we do as mediums. So if I get something as a medium and the person says, "Ah, well, I'm not quite sure, then I will ask the spirit or the medium will give me something else here because they need, we need to be clear here with them. I'm evidential. I need to give them evidence of that. And so then the spirit will come back with, yeah, well, your date of birth is, <laughs> or, you know, you used to live at number 10 or something. That's what you need to work on. Be clear about, yeah, Claire, be clear about what you're getting and how you're getting it. And the other thing about Claire Sentience is that I, 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 well, I may, I'll just say it. I think the word empath is overused. Uh, it's for some reason, I believe it's because of the onslaught of social media. Everything has been blown out of proportion. Um, empathy, empathic, being empathic is a trait. Uh, I don't know if everyone is born with it. I don't believe everyone is. And that goes into, and here I am link, link, um, linking in psychology here, but as we all know, some sociopaths, psychopaths lack empathy. They're unable to feel what others may feel. So they won't care about somebody else's feelings. So there's a lot of research that has been done around that. But people are using empathy a lot. Oh, I'm an empath. Are you an empath? Well, yes, we, I believe people are empathic and can be empathic. I am not quite clear if you can learn empathy. I have to say my experience in working anywhere with forensics or anything to do with um, even psychic development is that the example I gave earlier, well, people will have gifts, but let's say you're not naturally empathic. Well, you may be psychic, you may be clairvoyant, but you've got no empathy. You can't feel. So you may tell the person something horrible. You may give them the information, but the way you say it, the way you give it, you may have no regard for the person's feelings. So that's a personality. That's personality that comes into it. Uh, So I I don't believe everyone's born with empathy. Uh, But the amount of people who have jumped on the empathy bandwagon, I'm just seeing it everywhere, even and it feels manic to me, I have to say. And I believe that is a spiritual shift within our universal energy at the moment. Uh, I was watching someone who I hold in quite high regard, a gentleman uh, the other day on uh, it popped up on my feed and he is quite well known in another field, but now he's jumped on the empathy bandwagon and telling everyone just be empathetic. Okay, it's a good message, but it does feel, I I don't get a healing feeling from it. I get a manic feeling. I get a feeling that they're trying to just tap into people because it's a buzzword at the moment, because that's what they think will garner attention now. So that kind of energy, and we're, we're in for a shift. Yes, we are. We're definitely in for a shift soon. Um, it's a shift that's going to happen. Um, there's something else coming in, but this isn't the platform for it. At the moment, I want to stick to the Claire's at the moment. They deserve 
all respect here, there's shift happening, but empathy isn't something I don't believe you can sit down and teach someone. Well, you have to, you know, be empathetic. Now, I think people can learn just like you teach a child, look, be, you know, share your things, you know, say sorry, say sorry for hitting him. You know, you, you teach, you can teach people certain things, um, whether they mean it or not, they may do it because mom said do it or dad said do it. Whether they mean it or feel it is a whole different story. So, uh, yeah, so the jury's out on that. But em- empathy is where a person can put themselves in someone else's shoes, can literally, whilst it, it's different from being psychic, though, very different. You may naturally, and we see children like this, we see children who will sit and listen to someone Or if they see someone crying, they'll naturally run up to them and give them a hug. They'll share their lunch spontaneously. They will give, 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 give. Uh, We see people who want to help with charity very early on as children. So this is an empathy. They feel for people. And I, I believe, this is my belief system, that we're born with it. I believe we all can get better at it, but also there'll be just a little switch there, whether you're empathetic or not, but it's very different from being clairsentient, feeling things. So the empath will be able to put themselves in somebody else's shoes. They may even have been through it themselves. Clairsentience is different in that you're able to sense and feel what somebody else's feels and put yourself in their shoes. But not only can you do that, you know why a person is feeling the way they're feeling, doing what they're doing, feeling, doing all of it. You are able to know exactly why, how it came about, all the players within it all. So you get a little bit more, you get a bit more information The empath can only just sit for a moment or two and feel it with you. They may even go to bed with it. You know, they may even go to bed thinking about your hardship. And so uh, I would say uh, if you're naturally empathic, you are someone who thinks about it for a long time. If someone pours their heart out to you, it stays with you. Um, I would also say uh, psychics, quite naturally empathic counselors, any person in the helping profession, you know, doctors, nurses, naturally social workers, social workers, certainly uh, anybody in the health service, anybody who wants to help someone is a natural impact. But I still believe it's overused. It's over. It's being superimposed upon things that aren't even empathic or necessary. But just to be clear, being clairsentient and being empathic are different. So let's talk about the one that a lot of people are very curious about, and that's clairaliens. So clear smelling. This is being able to smell a scent or something like maybe a dead relative's favorite perfume or one that they're known by or cigar smoke, cigarette smoke, uh, tobacco Uh, You're able to smell burning sometimes. People are able to smell lots of things. And this is the one that I personally have a love. I won't say hate. I will say love ambivalent relationship with. And some people believe ambivalence is worse. I believe so as well. But I'm ambivalent about it because it's been it, it is helpful, but it's not easy. It's not always easy. So when you have clairaliance, you're able to smell things that have no physical source. So you can't see the incense burning in front of you, but you can smell pine incense. Why? Where is that from? There's nothing around you, nobody burning it. You smell cigar smoke, there's nobody smoking, those types of things. Um, Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just remembering some of the instances that have happened. Uh, And so... You're able to smell. Now, for me, that goes both ways. Some things I'd rather not smell. Some things I just would like to smell. I, you know, for instance, the nice things, I get flowers. Um, You know, I'm able to do mediumship. I can tell people their favorite flower. I can smell it. I can see it, smell it. One time I was able to 
uh, I, at one time a smell just popped. I just was able to smell something and it brought back a memory, a beautiful memory of something that was just lovely. It was random, a random smell. <laughs> but sometimes I, I've been able to smell things that aren't so nice. Um, I don't need to go into it. Okay, so nice things would be popcorn popping, coffee, toast, um, fresh fruit. I remember uh, smelling strawberries once. Um, I don't like orange juice, but I was able to smell it. I, I ugh, Orange juice, awful for me. I don't like it, but I was able to smell it. I can tolerate the smell, but not to drink it. Um, things like that, lemons, I was able to smell. Lemon, somebody had a lemon orchid and uh, I was able to smell the lemons. So lots of different things that just aren't in your view, you're able to smell. But again, for me, and I'd be interested to hear from other mediums and psychics, some things I'd rather not smell. Use your imagination <laughs> on that. I'm not going to go into it, but um, unpleasant. Um, but I, the good news is that it's only been like a whiff, <laughs> uh, you know, smell of something you know, like a whiff. Um, so I'll give <laughs> I will give you a quick example on my nose. Um, a quick example would be I was giving a reading for, to someone and um, the spirit gave me a sense that the person hadn't washed, hadn't had a shower. And so the smell, it was just for a couple of seconds. But I was like, oh, take that away. Get rid of that. Okay, I get it. I get it. They haven't bathed. And okay, so on a serious note, that information needed to come through. Very, very helpful. For whatever reason, spirit wants to give me that sharp shock. But I, I then knew why when I went home with the reading. And that was a serious issue. The person was about to go into a depression. And that's a symptom of depression. So they were about, they were sinking. They were sick. And that's why they had sought a psychic reading, which was brilliant. So not, not, and I will clarify, I don't believe it would have been a clinical depression, but it was something where they were about to start isolating and, and pulling themselves away, things like that. So that's not always a good thing. Sometimes it's helpful, but in this person's instance, it wasn't. Um, and so maybe they needed me to smell that just to quickly and it wasn't too bad, but it was, I, I could have done without it. But anyway, so that's just one, uh, one, I do, uh, yeah, one. I have others, I won't go into really strange, odd ones that, I, that I've had to say to Spirit, look, I don't, I don't ever want to smell that again. <laughs> um, just let me know that that's, just let me know, I don't need to smell it. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm very, and now one of the reasons, and actually Ruthie Phillips, who I've recently interviewed, we were talking about this, um, and she was saying that she was talking about her experiences with Claire Aliens. And I wonder if maybe because my natural sense as an everyday person of smell is very heightened, very high, I can smell things, you know, and again, that's a blessing or curse, but, you know, so maybe spiritually when i when spirit do want to get my attention they'll make me smell so i'll smell something um and again sometimes that's really helpful but sometimes i could do without it i think it's one of the least clairs that people tend to have again i don't know why we don't know and i didn't it's not something i sat down and worked on all of a sudden I was smelling things. I think one of the first things I did smell was I've got a favorite cousin. I shouldn't say this because um, I got, I got cousins. Um, I love you all, but it's an older cousin. That's what I'll say because our elders take precedence. So it's an older cousin who, when I was a child, he was just, Oh, my favorite, one of my favorites. <laughs> um, and so he smoked a cigar and so I could spend a particular cigar. So I, when I smell, it was probably one of the first things I remember smelling. And I think he passed the spirit in my, when I was in my teens, but after that I could smell his cigar and I knew he was around. 
And so sometimes I will, oh gosh, I just got, I just got his energy just now. Okay. So I know when he's around, oh, he was lovely and is lovely in spirit, laughed, taught everything, beautiful man, just beautiful energy. And so that's one of the first things I smelled was his cigar. And then after that, I started smelling everything else. Now, I have to say, maybe that wasn't, but that in my memory was one of the first times that I was aware and I was quite still quite young, you know, in my teens. So um, I think that was one of the first time I was aware. Ooh. I know that they're, they're dead, basically, and I can smell his cigar smoke. Excellent. Wonderful. Give me a, give me something else. Give me that's how I am with spirit. Give me something else. So, um, yeah, show me. Keep showing me. So uh, I'm still very curious, very, you know, open to it all. Claire Juxtans is the ability to taste, so clear tasting using the sense of taste. Again, this is a rare one, but a lot of us have it. A lot of medium psychics do have it. This is a good one as well. Yeah, not not any sort of bad experiences there. I gave the orange juice example where I'm able to smell it, but I wouldn't want to taste it. This is not, not one of my favorite things, so I wouldn't want to taste it. But for taste, it could be, my experience has been, it's been like favorite meals of relatives who've passed on. If you're giving a reading or psychic reading to someone, mediumship, they may make you taste the coconut cake, the tiramisu, the spaghetti, whatever it is, a favorite dish. This is excellent for any person developing spiritually to be able to expand your clairs. And if it's something you can sit and work on, by all means do it. This may also be, uh, I, I will throw this in. I know this is an odd one, but you know how people talk about, you know, I've got a taste for, for adventure. People say things like that. I've got a taste for excitement. I would say there is a taste for adventure, excitement, or whatever it may, it may even be fear, it may even be hate. Um, and so if you've got a very strong belief about something, you can taste it, sense it. I believe too, that's why some people's body language is the way they are. So when you're viewing body, body language, um, you may find that somebody gets spittle on the sides of their, on the sides of their mouth. Uh, and that's a psychological thing. They've got a taste for something. Uh, but keeping it on the psychic realm, if you are, if you have, if you have Claire Juxtance, then it's a brilliant gift. Hone it, use it. Uh, it may be random for me. It's just random. It just comes in to a, a spiritual reading when it's necessary, I believe, when spirit wants to I, you know, I, I, could, I guess one of the last ones I've had, I, I, somebody, I could taste like a coconut cake. And I said, oh, I can taste coconut, which I like. I said, I can taste. And she, oh, my God, it's a coconut cake. You know, the person used to make it all the time, which is, you know, a factor for them. They used to make it. And lastly, we'll talk about clear cognizance, which is something I mentioned before. Clear cognizance is clear knowing, Cogn being cognizant, knowing being clear about it. And I would say a lot of psychics are claircognizant. They will say they're clairsentient. And again, it's important to be able to distinguish, know the difference. So some of them are claircognizant and they're saying they're clairsentient. They may be both, uh, but clairsentience is just knowing. I knew that. So it's similar to clairsentience. Uh, but this will be where you get, I, I my experience has been that when I'm doing a, a spiritual talk, in other words, when spirit are being channeled, when I'm doing a spiritual talk, when spirit just speaking through me, I would say that's where the knowing comes in more for me. Like they're giving me this knowing that this is happening or this is going to happen. Earlier through this talk, the spirit gave me some things when I was talking about empathy. They're saying that there's going to be a shift about this is something I know. I feel I know. Uh, without giving all the details now, it's not the uh, right space for it, but there's a shift in here. But this is also when we have knowledge of people or events where you know things, you know, you knew that happened 
uh, on the 17th of January 2001 or something. You knew that happened. So how? You haven't, you're not seeing it? Are you seeing it? Are they writing it in front of you? Uh, are you, how, how do you know that? So that's a knowing. Um, now, this is important for mediumship because when people say, oh, I don't know. If you know as a medium, that's what you're getting, then you've got to stick to that. That's what you know. Let the person go and work it out for themselves. Uh, we often talk about the bruised forehead with mediumship. People go away and go, I, oh, I forgot all about that. And that happens so often. The emails you get where people say, oh, my goodness, I totally forgot you were right. That's what happened. So you may speak on something that you know nothing about, like even like a world event. It could be political. It could be scientific. It could be anything. It could be a social issue. Uh, and this is where we talk about spiritual talk. These are channeled messages through spirit where they're just coming through and talking uh, about things. So this will be a knowing. So usually people who do that are clear cognizant. They will be impressed upon this knowing. They're also using their mediumship, but there'll be a knowing that this is happening. This is going to happen. Or you may know there's times when you just know something. So going back to my early example of the, the tray dropping, yes, I saw it. I heard it. Uh, but I also knew it was going to happen. There's nothing no one would have said, could have said to me that, that doubted that. I absolutely knew that was going to happen. I didn't know when, and it happened quite quickly. So these are those, oh, my God, moments. So doctors have predicted cures. And again, I bring up Nostradamus. So this is being clear cognizant, just knowing that this is the case. And that concludes the talk about the Claire's. So there you have it. You have them all. Which ones are, are stronger for you? Do you have all of them? I love to hear from people who have all of them because then we can talk about it. Um, but again, this you've got to work with it. Know what's strong for you. Know what you have. Know what you don't have. Know what you might like so you can work on it. Be open to it. Um, know what you want to cut off a bit, uh, know, you know, take control of your development, your gifts. You are in control. I say that I know random things do happen, but overall you can recover it. You can recover from it and you can see it. So I will bring up lastly here about intrusive thoughts. Uh, now, sometimes I believe that can be a spiritual thing. And so you've got to learn to put up protection around you as a, as a working medium or, or a spiritualist or psychic, you've got to learn skills to help you through your journey so that you can continue to guide and help others. So thank you so much for watching guys. It's been wonderful to talk about the Claire's. I love this work, as you know, uh, as I'm sure it's coming across, I'm sure. <laughs> I love it. I'll continue. We've got some, I've got a, some uh, other interviews coming up, but it is coming up to my one year of this podcast, which I cannot believe. And so there'll be a little bit of a break. So there'll be this and then there'll be a break. Uh, there'll be another podcast I'm interviewing. I'm speaking to a lovely medium. And so Stay tuned, but we've got some exciting shows coming up for you all on spirituality and philosophy and psychology and just everyday living with some really interesting people. So thank you again. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to YouTube. We're trying to get our numbers up. Thank you so much for new subscribers, no, followers on Instagram. And I'm still posting on Twitter and Facebook. So join us, join us now and again. I do, uh, we do offers. So you may get a spiritual reading, join the newsletters all on the websites. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment. And also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.